With the sixth pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Josh Giddy from Ooh. Melbourne, Australia, and the okay. NBA Global Academy wow. in Canberra, Australia.
So we, we kind of, you know, there's not a lot of information about your junior days, but I mean, talk us through your junior journey. Was it always smooth sailing? Was it up and down? I read that you were, you know, real disappointed you didn't make the state team as a, as a bottom major in under 18s. But I mean, take us f- far back to, to when you were a young fella and, and growing up with basketball and how all that went for you. Yeah, so well, my junior career was pretty pretty interesting because I played all my juniors through Tigers. My um, my dad coached me right from under 12s. I think it started to under 18s. And then um, obviously, you know, you have all the under 16 state teams, under 8 state teams, which at the time is the most important thing in the world. And for me, it was, it was because under 16 bottom age, I got cut really early in the process. And, you know, I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to get cut again. And same thing happened, top 8, 16, I didn't make it. Then I'm like, all right, this is it. And then... Came back the following year for bottom age 18, still didn't make it. And I um, that's when I really took the foot down. And I, I really got in the gym, started working. I uh, knew I had to improve my game to, to make the next state team. And then um, when the next try rolled around, I was ready for it. And that was finally the first team, first state team I made. And, um, you know, my junior career through through the state ranks and the junior ranks, was, I was always kind of, you know, in the middle crop of players. I was never, you know, a standout player, but I was never, you know, right down the bottom. So... I was kind of uh, in that middle crop of, uh, of guys and um, it kind of motivated me to work because I wanted to be at that top end of players and, and kind of get the recognition. And I think uh, top age 18s, I finally got that recognition that, that I was working so hard for. So um, it was good to see that, that work pay off. Yeah, and I think we, we we see that pro very very often as well. Um, a lot of the kids, a lot of a lot of players in the NBA kind of come on very very late. I don't know a lot of Australian kids were the same. I mean, Ben was Ben Simmons, kind of a freak that just dominated all levels for the most part. But but most of us, you know, Joe Ingles, Patty, myself, Bainesy, um, yep. you know, we came on very very late. And I think it's a blessing in disguise. As much as we hate it, we're in the moment. Um, I think coming through those processes, if you know, arguably, if you would have made that under sixteen state team, you know, would you have potentially worked as hard and, and put as much effort in yeah, later exactly. on in your in your junior career? Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what I think about. I was, I always used to think about you know because at the time I was I was gutted because the under sixteen state team is to be all end all for everyone at that age. And at the time I was you know I was crying in my car, I didn't make the team. But as I look back at it now, I kind of think you know maybe it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't make it because. If I made it, you know, maybe I was complacent. I got happy with myself, and I, I didn't work as hard. But so, you know, I, I do look at it that way because, in the end, I am happy that I didn't make it because it forced me to work hard, and I kept getting cut, and it kept forcing me to work harder. So, um, you know, at the time, it's devastating because you want to be in those teams. But when you look back at it, when you get older, you kind of realize that they don't mean, you know, making under sixteen team state team doesn't mean anything for the long run because you see a lot of the guys that make those teams, they don't, they stop playing basketball after, you know, two years later. So, um. It is a blessing in disguise for me personally because I think if I did make those teams, I think I, I don't worry, I don't think I'd be where I'm at today. So, um, you know, as I look back at, it, I'm pretty happy I didn't make them teams. Yeah, Josh. Like when people are going to ask you about your early years, I mean, not just us, but like NBA teams, and you know, when they bring you in for a draft evaluation, and I think they like to see people be competitive. You know, especially with most of the American kids. When they see it, then when they get adversity early on in their career, they tend to like, especially when they were dominating their whole career and they finally see adversity, it really, it's a gut check. And for you to get cut from those teams and to have sort of the competitive, you know, will to get better, I, I think it, it says a lot about you as far, as well as a young kid doing that. And I think it says a lot about your development and, you know, that's a, that's a great thing to hear. And it's a great thing to tell people as well as you just had that chip on your shoulder and you're competitive. That's a big part about being really good in this league. Yeah, no, 100%. It's, I've always kind of had a competitive, you know, fire within me. And it really sparked when I when I got cut from all those teams that I wanted to make. And um, as I touched on, when you were 14, 15 years old, you think those teams are like making an NBA All-Star game. And if you don't make it, you know, the world's going to end. But um, as you get older, you look back at it and you start to realize that, you know, it, it doesn't mean much. So, um so that, that competitive edge has definitely always been there for me and I've kind of always played with a, a bit of a chip on my shoulder.
Give us a reason why, I've read a little bit about it, but you chose the NBL and the Adelaide 36 specifically over over college. Um, what, what was the reasoning? Was it your decision solely? Was your, Were your family involved? Do you have someone mentoring you? How did that all work out to, to come to, to fruition? Yeah, um, that was a really tough decision for me because I was, you know, early on, I was like really adamant on college. I was 99% college and then I went on a visit to um, the University of Colorado and I was, I came, I flew home and I'm like, all right, I'm going to commit. And then I was, you know, 99.9% committed there. And then I got back and I started talking with some people and then thinking about it more. And, you know, I decided the NBL route was going to be better for me just in terms of, you know, being able to stay home. My family's here. I, I get to play uh, with grown men in the professional league um, with so many eyes on it at such an early age. And I think it was going to, you know, fast track my development. So, that was kind of the reasoning behind that, but it, it wasn't an easy decision at all because ever all the times I went with the NBA Global Academy overseas on those trips, it was all college coaches recruiting. So all I ever spoke to was college people and coaches and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was really, really locked in on college, but then, um, you know, I, I kept tossing and turning and it wasn't an easy decision, but mom was really, she was really set on me going to college as well. She, she didn't really want me to go the NBL pathway, but then I, well, I kind of talked her out of it and she came around to it later and I think she's pretty happy with it now. At the start, it was tough because, you know, it's, I've always come from junior. You rock up the training two minutes early, put your shoes on and get some shots up and leave. But here it's like you got weights, you got training, you got video, you got extra sessions after before. So it's a complete different world. And I think um, at the start, I, it took me a while to get used to it and, and kind of get, get, get into the groove of it. But once I did, I, I kind of figured it out pretty early on. And um, it, it's just been smooth sailing from there. But, um, you know, being a professional uh, to being a junior basketball is a complete different, a complete different world. And um, I think the, the first, you know, couple of weeks are probably the hardest. But once you get adjusted, it's pretty smooth sailing from there.
Let's start though with Josh Giddy. Of course, the next day he leads the league in assists. He's been outstanding. He's had three triple doubles in the last couple of weeks. And the announcement yesterday by himself, jointly with the NBL and the Adelaide 36, is that he will be shutting it down and preparing for oh, the NBA God. draft. I suppose the obvious question, Josh, is we knew it was coming, you was coming, but how do you feel now that it's, it's out? Good. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's been a long process and it's been exciting. And um, obviously, being an NBA player has been a dream of mine for a long time. So for it to be, you know, more of a realistic, op realistic opportunity for me, then it's kind of, you know, Coming at a pretty fast tempo, um, I just thought now was a good time to you know, announce I was declaring for the draft and um, you know, I'm happy with it and I'm excited for it. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Josh Giddy from Ooh. Melbourne, Australia and the NBA Global Academy wow. in Canberra, Australia. So Josh Giddy is the fifth Australian born 